What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about how to get into Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. I've got five tips for you which, if you apply them all to your life and your application, will greatly increase your chances of getting into Vanderbilt. So, let's start with tip number one. Below this video, in the description section, please find the link to my How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically article, which is published over at admissions.blog. Read every word of that article. The earlier in high school, the better, because if you can do everything that article is advising, you will go into the formal college application process during the summer before your senior year in high school, well positioned to get into Vanderbilt. Really read this article carefully and take it seriously. This is so important because in the article, I provide specific advice about how to make smart academic, testing, extracurricular, and personal communication skills development choices throughout high school that will lay the foundation for a successful college application process. Now, while I understand that Vanderbilt is not an Ivy League school, I want you to achieve the exact same sort of excellence as I advise applicants to achieve if they want to get into an Ivy League college because, frankly, Vanderbilt has become just as selective as some Ivies. For context, Vanderbilt's early decision acceptance rate as of this filming is smack dab in between Cornell's and Penn's. A bit lower than Cornell's, a bit higher than Penn's. That's pretty amazing. Vanderbilt's regular decision acceptance rate is actually hovering between Cornell's and Penn's too. So Vanderbilt is a much sought after college destination. Do not doubt it. Moving on to tip number two. If Vanderbilt is your first choice and you feel comfortable emotionally and financially committing to attending, apply early decision one. As always, early decision is a binding agreement. If you get into Vanderbilt Early Decision, otherwise known as ED, you are committing to attend. Vanderbilt offers Early Decision 1, Early Decision 2, and Regular Decision. Vanderbilt gives greatest preference to those who apply binding Early Decision. Therefore, if you can get your act together early enough, use the earlier ED1 deadline if you are ready to attend Vanderbilt when or if admitted. Though, ED2 is still a great option if you figure out Vanderbilt is your first choice sometime between November 1 and January 1 of your senior year. If you are planning to apply to Vanderbilt regular decision, good luck. Vanderbilt has become so much more selective in recent years as a result of its reliance on ED1 and ED2. Applying regular decision is like signing up to swim with the sharks. I wouldn't risk being in a pool with a lot of students who just got rejected from Princeton, Georgetown, and Notre Dame EA, or Rice, Stanford, and Dartmouth EA or ED. But that's exactly what you are going to be doing to yourself if you apply to Vanderbilt regular decision. Bottom line, with tip number two, if Vanderbilt were my first choice, I would apply ED1, or at the least ED2. Tip number three. Vanderbilt, unfortunately, despite being an increasingly selective research university with massive application demand, does not allow you to upload a full-fledged, unabridged extracurricular resume to its supplement on the Common App. I think this is a real shame because many Vanderbilt applicants desperately want to or desperately need to differentiate their extracurricular exploits by going into far more depth than the prefab activity section of the Common App allows. Yet, there is still a way to go beyond the minuscule amount of space available to you on the Common App Activities page. My recommendation is to use all 650 words of the additional information section on the writing page of the Common App to elaborate on extracurricular activities that you began describing in the activities page of the Common App and or use this additional information section on the writing page of the Common App to describe for the first time activities that never made the cut at all to be included on the 10 entry activities page. Now, 
you don't just want to use random formatting or structure to elaborate on your extracurricular activities in this additional information section of the writing page on the Common App. You want to convey more information about your extracurricular depth and breadth, but you need to do so effectively and efficiently. After all, you only have 650 words to work with. With that in mind, you need to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume before you even start filling out your college applications. That way, you will have a really strong working document to pull from for your 650 word additional information section resume. How do you do that? I am so happy that you asked. You gotta take the definitive course aptly named How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume, which I link to below in this video's description. As I often say, it's no longer about simply being a college applicant worthy of admission to a university like Vanderbilt. It's just as much, if not more important, to know how to communicate that you are a college applicant worthy of admission to a university like Vanderbilt. This online extracurricular building resume building course that I just recommended that is linked below again in the video description will help you do just that vis-a-vis -vis the very important yet often overlooked additional information section of the writing page on the Common App. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Moving on to tip number four, and this dovetails with the communication skills that I was just speaking about. Vanderbilt supplement on the Common App is pretty basic. The only little bit of extended writing you get to complete is up to 400 words in response to this short little prompt. Quote, please briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities or work experiences. End quote. Now honestly, you would be shocked at how many students screw up their response to this prompt. Please, for the love of all that is holy, do not simply write out an extended narrative resume entry in response to this prompt. Please, please do not do that. So many students see this prompt and they just look at it one-dimensionally and then think to themselves something along these lines. Well, I didn't get to write much about being class president on the activities page of the Common App. I might as well give more details about my responsibilities as class president here. Oh, I feel like that's such a missed opportunity and trust me, it is. You don't want to just state objective facts here like an extended resume entry. Instead, you need to make sure to frame your response to this prompt as a mini essay with a little thesis, a little body, and a little conclusion. And make sure this mini essay is highly subjective in nature. What I mean by this is, if you are going to use your class president position as the extracurricular to write about, you need to show and tell a short story, like a day in the life tale, that brings out a larger point or two about why you did it, what you learned from it, how you grew from it, and why it matters. Basically, you need to go deep with showing you in action in this activity, and then zoom out to explain in at least the last third of the response or so why this activity has been important in your development as a person and why it should be important to Vanderbilt in the context of Vanderbilt getting to know you. Please take this piece of writing extremely seriously as it's the only Vanderbilt specific one that you get on the Vanderbilt supplement. Show Vanderbilt your value added by your choice of activity to elaborate on, how you describe your actions in this activity, and what you got out of this tech activity. And remember, again, keep it more on the subjective side as opposed to objective. Objective is for the resume. Subjective is for this piece of writing and any other sort of short writing you find on any applications. So on to tip number five. This is a good one too. Vanderbilt gives you the opportunity to interview as part of its admissions process. Through the Commodore Recruitment Programs Interviewing Program, a student applying to Vanderbilt is invited to request an interview from a Vanderbilt alumnus in his or her local region once Vanderbilt has received a completed application from the student. While alumni interviews are optional, 
and Vanderbilt cannot guarantee the availability of alumni to interview all students, particularly those living outside of well-populated areas, I implore you to engage in such an interview, if at all possible, no matter where you live. Even if you live in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, if you are interested in attending Vanderbilt and you've submitted a completed application to Vanderbilt, you call and email Vanderbilt to request an interview if you don't get an invite for one, for one within two weeks of applying. Did you hear me say that? I said it. You call or email Vanderbilt to request an interview if you don't get an invite for one within two weeks of applying. Even if nobody is around to interview you locally, at least Vanderbilt will know you really wanted to interview. And though they may not officially track it, you can bet if you raise enough of a polite stink about not getting the chance to interview, they will certainly unofficially note your demonstrated interest. While Vanderbilt states that not interviewing won't reflect poorly on students who cannot arrange an interview, you can also bet that students who simply turn down the chance to interview with an alumnus in their vicinity are certainly missing out on a major opportunity. As an aside, I will say, say that um, as a Penn alumnus, I used to interview for Penn. And I remember calling an applicant to set up an interview with me. She outright refused. And I asked her why, and she claimed that she was too nervous to interview. While I don't know if that excuse was true or not, what I do know is that being nervous is not an excuse I'll accept from you for not taking part in an interview, with Vanderbilt or any other school for that matter. So instead of writing up my impressions of this student who refused to interview based on a face-to-face -to -face interview with her, I had to communicate to Penn that the student refused to interview. Vanderbilt collects summaries of alumni interviews too. Why wouldn't you want someone else, an alumni interview, or in this case, an alumni interviewer in this case, of course, in your corner when Vanderbilt's admissions office reviews your application holistically? I, I just don't understand it. I would only accept that it's okay not to interview if you are physically cut off from any possible means of meeting with an interview. Do your best to try and meet Vanderbilt halfway on this. Come on. Even if you have to drive far, please try to interview. It's an amazing chance to put a face to the application, differentiate yourself in person, and display your passion for and knowledge of Vanderbilt. Finally, while Vanderbilt used to be known as a place to find lots of young Southern women in white pearls, these days it looks and feels like almost any other selective campus community in terms of student makeup and style. Though I would say the student body still tends to be a bit preppier and a bit better put together than appear institutions like WashU, Northwestern, and Emory. Why am I telling you this? Well, because I'm building up to make a solid outerwear recommendation so that you can uh, get into the, the Vanderbilt, but also look awesome once you get there and can start buying some Vanderbilt swag that you can strut around in as a second semester high school senior and on Vanderbilt's campus come your first fall upon matriculation. So in the description below this video are links to my favorite Vanderbilt University men's and women's Movado watches. Oh, they are hot. Hold on tight. The price tag on each of these watches is almost as high as a semester's worth of books, but damn, they are nice watches. If you don't want to splurge, I'm also including links to my favorite men's and women's Vanderbilt tops. And heck, if you get in, you might as well look the part when in Rome, as they say. Thanks for watching, and you are now well positioned, of course, to put together a strong application to Vanderbilt a much stronger one than you otherwise would have been able to produce had you not made it to the end with me. So thank you again for your patience and for your attention. If you want more personalized college admissions coaching and college application feedback, please visit collegemeister.com where you can sign up to work one-on-one -on -one with me, Craig Meister. And feel free to watch this video over again to make sure you absorbed all of the important information that I shared. Please also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and sharing it with your friends. Good luck, and until next time, I'm College Meister, Craig Meister, with all you need to get in.